Um, I'd like to go back to Wade, uh, Galatians 2, where you read um, Paul speaking about, especially when he spoke about Peter, Galatians 2. Yeah. Um, now, do you believe that is that Paul is referring to the what they call the Jerusalem Council that's recorded in Acts chapter 15? Um, this, no, I don't, um, because the, the, uh, council was in Jerusalem, right? Yeah. Well, in Acts chapter 15. Yeah. Right. So here in Galatians, it says, but when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face. They weren't even in Jerusalem. Oh, oh sorry. I mean, I mean the, um, was it before that? Oh, you're talking you... about the, the first half of the chapter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you that believe was... that? So is that talking about the same event as Acts 15? Um, I mean, I could speculate one way or the other. I don't know that. It would have to be. It would either have to be at that time or after, because it seems like that was that was the last time, you know, that they all got together and then gave the right hand of fellowship and went 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 their separate direction, separate ways. Um, I don't know. Is there a particular reason why you're wondering? Yeah, I believe they're ta that's talking about the same event as Acts chapter 15. I mean, really, it doesn't really matter if it is or not. But um, I mean, it says I went, uh, he said, I went again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and also Titus with me. Uh, so Acts chapter 15. Yeah, me. Now, see, again, this is the, the dating in my Schofield Bible is not inspired, inerrant, infallible. But <laughs> according to the Schofield, it puts the Jerusalem Council at AD 46, which would be 12 years before Galatians 2, which is AD 58. Yeah, and I, I, I would... I would question, I'm not saying it's wrong, but I would question the dating of Paul's conversion as well in the Schofield Bible. I'm not saying it's wrong. I would just say I'd question that. Uh, everything I, everything else I've ever read said that it was later, a whole lot later than that. But um, so in Acts chapter 15, verse 1, now you read from the King James, right? Yeah. Okay. So Acts chapter 15, verse 1 sounds a whole lot like I, I can't see it being anything different than Galatians 2. In Galatians 2, he says he goes up to Jerusalem. All right. So in 51, certain men <clears throat> which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, except you be circumcised, the man of Moses cannot be saved. Um, actually, let me check something here, because I know that Barnabas and Titus were both with him in Galatians too. So I know Barnabas, I think, was there, but I don't think Titus was. But he could have been just not mentioned, but okay. It, it doesn't really matter if that's the same event. I believe it. I believe it is. I believe it's pretty, I, don't, I can't imagine that being another event, but uh, so in Acts chapter 15, yeah, and certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. Therefore, Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and dis disputation with them they determined that paul and barnabas and certain other men there we go and certain other men or certain other of them 
should go up to Jerusalem. So that would that would cover Titus right there in verse two. Should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. Um, okay, so would would you say, Wade, that within the first two verses of Acts chapter 15, you have well, verse one, okay, certain man came down from Judea, taught the brethren, saying, except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. So that that disturbed Paul and Barnabas. That's why it says in Acts chapter 15, verse two, when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. Would it be would it be fair to say that Paul escalated the issue to Jerusalem? Uh, absolutely, um, he did. In fact, um, see, it's interesting because in Galatians. Two. Yeah, I don't think they're the same time because this was the first time he'd seen him in 14 years and he went up by revelation to Jerusalem and met with him. It doesn't say anything about a spat that led to, to him doing it. But anyway. Um, so, so you said absolutely this would be in Acts chapter 15 that Paul escalated the matter to jerusalem yeah and i think see this and okay this is this is where i stand on this i think this is tied directly to relations one um because you've got these these two programs in place where paul's going out to the gentiles and and preaching the gospel um according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret since the world began, Romans 16, 25. He's going out preaching the grace of God to these Galatians. And a lot of, and I'm sure you've heard Christians say, there's only one gospel, Galatians 1, 6 through 9, you know, let them be accursed that they didn't preach that. It's not what it says. Because obviously there's a gospel of circumcision, uncircumcision. There's a gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of the grace of God, which I think classifies they're the same, you know, as far as group, grouped out. But Paul specifically says, He's protecting the body of Christ, the local church here in Galatia of the those that have believed the gospel and are now members of the body of Christ. When he says, I marvel um, that you're so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that ye have received, let him be accursed. He mentions earlier, he says, um, which one was it? Oh, in verse eight. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. So essentially what he's saying there is this is where all of the <sighs> Judaizers <laughs> marching into, into, you know, trying to drag the Galatians back under the law, which is why later he says, oh, foolish Galatians who have bewitched you and stand fast in liberty, be not put in the yoke of bondage. The whole book of Galatians is Paul is addressing, um, you know, these Jews that have come in and have tried to convert these Gentiles to essentially um, putting them back under the law, um, you know, essentially with, you know, it, it the... Anyway, I, I'll just leave that there. So, but I think that I think that that's 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 what's going on in the Jerusalem Council is 
part of what leads up to that, regardless of the timing of it. But because Paul started having these headbutting times where, you know, you've got these, these believing Jews, you know, that are, that do believe Christ is the Messiah, trying to make these ridiculous claims, like in verse one, next 15, you know, except to be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved, you know, which is absurd, you know, and Paul. Wait, do you think the Torah is the word of God? Do you think God gave the Torah? Of course he did. And he also so, gave, gave the, uh, the other 59 <clears throat> books in the canon of scripture. <laughs> Well, that would mean that God contradicted himself and changed. And per Malachi 3, 6, God doesn't change. Oh. If Paul went out preaching that they didn't have to follow the laws and the commandment per scripture, per Deuteronomy 13, that makes him a false prophet. There's a, there's a lot more I want to talk about in regards to Acts 15. Um, God doesn't for change, but the way he deals with man absolutely has changed over time during different ages, you know, and various um, periods of time. I mean, e even if you look at the, the eating laws, you know, they go from the garden of herbivores to omnivores for Noah and his family to, you know, anything but pork and your, your, you guys diet to Israel alone. And now, you know, anything can be received as long as it's with Thanksgiving back to omnivore again. So God didn't change, but his administration and dealings with man changes from time to time. But the very essence so and nature. Why would God give us a test to test prophets and then completely go back on that without ever telling us? Give, give me a minute. I need, I need to refill my coffee. By the way, Paul was not a prophet, and neither were. Oh, I know. None of the apostles were prophets. We agree on something. Deuteronomy 13 applies to more than just prophets, though. It literally says it. There's a lot I want to get to in Acts 15. Is it really fruitful? I mean, it's all fruitful. It's all fruitful. What's that one fruit that tastes like feet that nobody likes? Tastes like what? Feet? Tastes like feet. Yeah, nobody likes it. It's over in Asia. Durian? Yes, that is uh, it. Yeah, I couldn't durian. remember the name. <laughs> how, did you, how did you remember that? <laughs> it smells horrible. <laughs> but it doesn't taste that bad, actually. It's and really weird. I I guess it's. Did you, you 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 tasted it before? I have not. I've only heard about it. It smells horrible, like horrible. It's it's almost like you don't want to even try to taste it. But but like honestly, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. I could eat it without being you know grossed out about it. It's it's not that bad. Yeah. Well. Still, it would probably fall on the scale of less desirable fruit. Um, uh, I'm going to have to switch chargers here. My main phone is about to die. All right. I'm over here. On. All right. Switch. I'm not sure how much longer I can endure, brother. We will see. But it's going good for you too. You're you're even an hour ahead of I am. Yeah. But um 
And I want to get through Acts 15 if we can. Just the whole premise of there being two different standards is completely unscriptural, though. I mean, for being honest. But this has for sure been an interesting, interesting fellowship. Really good for most of the night. Sorry, I'm almost done. I agree, one John. Hey, Bradley. How's it going, brother? And thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, Defender of Christ, you are correct. And Will, uh, yeah, Will, before uh, before we get into more here, Will, if you don't mind, Will, when you're um, when you're talking, uh, when you got when you're on mute, could you would it be possible? Could you please also turn off the camera as well? Because it's it's actually pretty distracting for people. Yeah, you mute? yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um. <clears throat> Wait, right. Wade, my question Acts. for you would what's that? I'm gonna say Acts something. 15. Yeah, yeah. My question for you would be um so why would Paul, who's got a completely different message in it, why would he escalate it to James and Peter in Jerusalem? Because they were the chosen apostles by Jesus Christ himself. Um, you know, this was, you know, the 12 chosen specifically, you know, which Calvinists love in John 14, 15, or 15, 14, one where he says, you've not chosen me, but I've chosen you. Um, he's talking about the 12. And Are you a Calvinist? No, 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 no. Okay, okay. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> um, but that's referring to the choosing of them specifically. There are more apo apostles, like where you sent the 70 apostles out, just meaning they were sent by Jesus and so forth. But the, the, the 12 that Jesus said, you know, and he tells them in that whole passage about the rich man and didn't want to give up his stuff, you know, for, you know, He's claimed oh, I kept the law, and Jesus said, "Sorry, then you haven't followed me." And he was like sad and wanted to keep his things. He had great possessions, and then right after that, the apostles are like, "Well, we've left everything and followed you, and what do we get?" You know. And he said that he tells the the twelve. He said that you know, or the eleven, I guess at that time, um, he tells them that you guys will will sit on thrones in the kingdom and judge the 12 tribes of Israel, you know, so they had a very sp specific calling from Christ that continues on. And of course the new Jerusalem, you know, the foundations will be named by the apostles, the 12, as well as the 12 tribes of Jude on the gate, 12 tribes of Israel for the gates. But anyway, um, then you've got Paul who is the singular apostle that was called and directly sent by Christ himself and received the revelation of mystery and wrote 13 epistles and so forth. So they had, you know, this is a meeting of the leadership 
so to speak, convening together to hash out how we're going to handle this because, you know, the 12 and their followers were going out, as you can see here, trying to tell people that they had to be circumcised to be saved and teaching law and, um, you know, and obviously Paul's ministry was, you know, Ephesians 3, 2, he was, he, he was given dispensation of grace us were his ministry was you know was not to those who were under the law the law of moses was never intended for gentiles scriptures crystal clear and the only way you can twist it is to say that we're grafted in like he was saying earlier which we're not but um you know so he's going out to these people um initially he goes into the synagogues first because you know like he said in Romans 1 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for his power of God and salvation, Jew person also the G, also the Greek. So he he would initially go to a town city and he'd start off the synagogue, they reject him, and he'd go to the Gentiles. And he did that multiple times till finally at the end of Acts 28, you know, that was when he wiped his hands and said, Salvation is sent to the Gentiles and only. So he goes on and begins his ministry. So um so I think that's the reason why I would to answer your question i think that that's why that's why he specifically wanted to meet up with these guys which again they're still in jerusalem <clears throat> yeah i understand that i don't see any other names except for peter and james in jerusalem at that point in time but um would you would you say that that in in escalating this issue to Peter and James and the rest of the elders, would you say that, that Paul was actually practically um, considering Peter and James to be of a higher authority than him? No, 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 no. Um, well, I mean, I don't know, higher authority, whatnot. They, he does mention at one point, you know, that he is what the least of the apostles or, or whatever. And I think that, you know, it's not only a reference, I think, to Paul's humility or whatever, which he expresses many times in many ways, but in the sense that, um, you know, that they, that they have a specific purpose in the millennial kingdom and, you know, will we'll sit on thrones and judge the 12 tribes and so forth. Um, but no, I think, I, I, I think this is, this is where he's trying to, trying to come to an agreement where like, like in Galatians one, that he doesn't have these, these guys, and their followers, you know, coming in behind him into these. You Sorry know, to interrupt. My audio is acting up again. I'm going to jump out and come back in like I did before. I don't know why, but it's being weird on my end. I'll be right back. Okay. Um, but regardless of the timing before and after with Galatians and all that, you've got situations where you know, these followers, um, these Jewish believers going around and trying to, you know, put people under the law, essentially, um, which is why Paul, you know, withstands Peter to the face. It wasn't, it wasn't his hypocrisy about sitting with the, with the uh, Gentiles. I heard you guys talking about it while I was eating my bacon burger. Um, I hope I hope it was good. Oh, it was okay. Okay. Um, but you know, it wasn't about the hypocrisy because, like, like you said, you even mentioned that Paul said, you know, that all things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. And you know, when I'm with the Gentiles, you know, I'll do as the Gentiles, and with the Jews, do as the Jews, or whatever. But it wasn't a hypocrisy, and he wasn't you know, hiding from one group or the other. It was just simply not to be a stumbling stone, 
you know, for conscience sake or whatever with those groups. But Peter, on the other hand, was being flat out hypocrite about it. And then, um, but what it ultimately led to was in verse 14 in Galatians 2 was the main problem where he says, said unto Peter before them all, if thou being a Jew livest after the manner of Gentiles and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? So, you know, he's calling them out um, for that very thing, you know, of, of, you know, trying to, I'm trying to think of a word other than Judaize, but, you know, essentially kind of proselytize these folks um, that are not under the law, under grace, and, you know, Paul stood up to him about it. And then they went and hashed it out at the Jerusalem Council. And essentially, you know, okay. They essentially came to the agreement that you know of in, in that passage or whatever. It's sort of. <laughs> I mean, basically, they suggested, you know, okay, so they don't have to keep the law, but they need to at least keep these four things that know, are in with the uh, blood and the strangled and the idols and fornication, um, you know, and that, that was. Let me ask you one question. If that was the only four things that the council decided they needed to do. Why did Paul bring up so much extra stuff in Galatians 5? That was far and beyond what what the Jerusalem Council was talking about. What are you talking about? Galatians 5. So here, let me, I'll pull it up and read it for you. I don't want to get too far ahead here. I want to. Yeah, read. let's, let us finish here and. Well, you're just saying they only they decided that only these four things are done, right? But but it Paul says in Galatians five, yeah, you know, now the works of the flesh are evident sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery. They didn't bring up sorcery, it, enmity, they didn't bring up that, they didn't bring up strife or jealousy, they didn't bring up fits of anger or rivalries, they didn't bring up dissensions or divisions or envy or drunkenness. They did bring up orgies in the Jerusalem council, but he says, these are the people that will not inherit the kingdom of God in Galatians five. That's, that's way more than discussed in acts 15 at the Jerusalem. You're council. getting us off topic and I'm more than happy to. Was this off topic? How you're saying they decided only these four because, things are done. Because you are, you're using Paul to justify this. And Paul, even in his own letters has so listen, much more to say listen. about it. You're obviously incapable of having a discussion without arguing. No, I want to have a conversation that makes sense. And right now, that is not what I'm having. About a passage with Christopher right now. I, I No, this is completely in line. You said they, by your own words, we're talking about Acts 15. They came to this with Paul. They came to this conclusion with Paul. Galatians was written after that. We've already talked about this. So why does Paul add all these things from the law? That they have to do in order to inherit the kingdom he of God. He is not teaching the law. Literally in everything in this, in Galatians 19 through 22, that is all the Torah. Every single one of those is in the Torah. You're not, you don't, un, you don't understand that. that Make me that understand because I don't get it. See, I'm done with you. I'm trying to answer you. You keep interrupting me. You're, you I haven't even been able to talk, me. Wade. You're just pandering over me every time I speak. Because Let me have a chance. And how about you address me. my question instead of saying, oh, you're interrupting me. Because no. you're angry. But yeah, I am getting angry because you're right. that's why, crushing that's why me why aside. I you an angry out because you're always just so angry about everything. What are you doing? You're getting angry. Don't fight anger with anger. That's in Second Peter, right? You're, you you're just like okay. a, a, a peaceful conversation that we're having over I here. I want to have a peaceful conversation that makes sense. And you're not addressing my questions. You're brushing them aside. 
okay let's let's take this let's let's talk about acts chapter 15 we're on acts chapter 15 right now let's talk about that um i've got a few more questions for wade about acts chapter 15 i'd like to learn his point of view on these things um so how i understand it in acts chapter 15 you got men which came from Judea, taught the brethren, saying, except you be circumcised in the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. Now, according to the context of this in the next the several verses after that, I understand that to be the Gentiles, the new Gentiles that have, have come in. Um, and it's like, what are we going to do with these Gentiles? Um, well, you know what, let's just... I'll just read it a few verses in here just to get a little bit of context. And I got a couple questions. Um, yeah, I'll just start again with verse one. And certain men came down from Judea, taught the brethren, saying, except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenice and Samaria, declaring the conversation of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they, and they declared all the things that God had done with them. But there, there, rose, there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying, that is, need, that is needful to circumcise, excuse me, that is needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. Now, this, this is the one, way I want to ask you about it specifically. So, and when, and when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said to them, Men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And then he goes on to, to basically deliver like a sermon about what are, how are we going to deal with the Gentiles. Finally, in verse 13, James brings down the final word, being the highest of authority, I understand, in, in that group. Um, so my question is, Wade, Acts chapter 15, verse 7, does that not contradict... Galatians 2, 7. Well, like, like, Peter, Peter began the, uh, you know, his, his commission, essentially, like we've talked about prior to the Apostle Paul getting saved and being sent out as an apostle, um, to the Gentiles, the book of Acts is, see, Acts is hard to, to, to kind of lay out because it's a transitional book and there's, there's a, there's a trans transition going on between, you know, it to leading to, you know, oops, leading to, um, batteries and that, um, you know, leading to the fall of Israel to be blind in part, leaving only essentially the remnant. So you've got you've got Peter, who is you know preaching the gospel, of the kingdom to Israel, and you know during during that period prior. Paul's ministry and the way that I believe as far as like, you know, the mystery of the revelation, mystery of the body of Christ and so forth. 
the, the church, which is his body and so forth. Um, you've got this other ministry going on that that is what I would consider the little flock, the remnant of Israel, which a Gentile, as you know, could could become a Jew, you know, by being circumcised and keeping the law and become a proselyte, um, you know, into it. So, so he's giving a, a, a historical account going back, you know, to earlier in his ministry before Paul even got saved, where he's going and, you know, preaching the message that, that he was commissioned along with the other disciples um, to go out and preach. And by this time, when they have the meeting at the, at the council with, in Jerusalem, um, you know, he, and, and I don't know, he could even be, he could even be referring even as far back as it's not likely it would have been in the temple in Acts three and four, but you know, at Pentecost, he addressed ye men of Israel, but Jerusalem's a crossroads of the world at that time. So there's people from, you know, all over. So obviously that gospel he began preaching along with the other apostles, you know, would have been heard by, you know, other Gentiles as well. Um, but Peter's never referred to um, as the apostle to the Gentiles, you know, so whereas he is Acts 15, 6. What's that? Acts 15, 6. Peter says he is the apostle to the Gentiles as determined by God. No, it doesn't. There's Acts 15, 5. No. So, um, okay, so. It literally says this. Brothers, you know that in the early days, God made the choice among you that by my mouth should the Gentiles hear the word of the gospel and believe. That is Peter talking, Acts 15, 7. Are you even listening to what we're, we've just been spending the last five you just minutes. just said that Peter we've been, never been talking about that verse for five minutes. You just said that Peter was never called the apostle to the Gentiles, and it's right there. We've been talking about that very verse for the last five minutes, and you're not even listening. Give me something worth listening to. Okay, so. Um, this is why I've never wanted to have a discussion with you. Because. So, because I'm pointing out that your doctrine makes no sense. No, because you act like a 12 year old and you don't listen. Really? 